Have you ever wondered why we live in a world increasingly obsessed with image and appearances? Why our lives seem to be constantly influenced by advertising, social media, and consumerism? If you have, then today I invite you on a journey to explore the ideas of a visionary philosopher who anticipated these questions decades ago, Guy Debord. Guy Debord was a French philosopher, writer, and filmmaker who played a central role in the Situationist International, a radical artistic and political movement that emerged in the late 1950s. The Situationists sought to challenge the way society was organized and valued, focusing on the role of art, culture, and politics in shaping our lives. Their ultimate goal was to create a more authentic, just, and meaningful world. One of de Boer's most profound contributions to modern thought is his concept of the society of the spectacle. De Boer argued that in contemporary society, images and representations have become more important than the actual experiences and realities they depict. This shift towards the superficial and the sensational has profound consequences for our lives, our relationships, and our understanding of the world around us. Now, you might be wondering, why is it important for us to understand the society of the spectacle today? Well, as we navigate our increasingly digital and interconnected world, we are bombarded with an ever-growing number of images, advertisements, and curated representations of reality. By understanding de Boer's ideas, we can begin to recognize the mechanisms that drive this spectacle and work towards reclaiming our authentic experiences. So, let us dive into the world of Guy Debord and the Situationist International, and see how their revolutionary ideas can help us better understand and navigate the complexities of our modern society. Together, we'll explore the historical context of the society of the spectacle, break down its key principles, and examine real-life examples to see how Debord's ideas continue to be relevant in our lives today. To fully appreciate Debord's ideas and the emergence of the society of the spectacle, we must first understand the historical context in which they were born. In the aftermath of World War II, the world experienced unprecedented economic growth and prosperity. The rise of consumerism became a defining feature of this era, as people were encouraged to seek happiness through material possessions and consumption. However, this rapid transformation also brought about a sense of disillusionment and alienation for many. It was during this time of change that the Situationist International was formed. This avant-garde group of artists, writers, and intellectuals from various European countries came together in 1957 with a shared desire to challenge the status quo and explore alternative ways of living. They believed that capitalism and the consumer society had turned life into a mere spectacle, devoid of authentic experiences and genuine connections. Guy Debord was a founding member and the intellectual driving force behind the Situationist International. He played a crucial role in shaping the group's ideas and strategies, using his own background in philosophy, art, and political activism as a foundation. Debord's unique perspective and critical analysis of contemporary society culminated in the publication of his seminal work, The Society of the Spectacle, in 1967. In this influential book, de Boer developed a comprehensive critique of the consumer society, examining how it had come to dominate our lives and shape our experiences. He argued that the spectacle had replaced genuine human interaction with a passive consumption of images and representations, ultimately leading to a widespread sense of alienation and dissatisfaction. Now that we have established the historical context, and the development of de Boer's ideas, let's delve into the key principles of the society of the spectacle. The first principle is that the spectacle is a unifying concept in modern society. De Boer believed that the spectacle infiltrates every aspect of our lives, shaping our thoughts, desires, and actions. It is not just a collection of isolated images or distractions. Rather, it is an all-encompassing social relationship that dictates how we perceive and interact with the world around us. The second principle centers on the separation of individuals from authentic experiences. In the society of the spectacle, our lives become increasingly mediated through images, representations, and commodities. As a result, we become detached from our own experiences and from genuine human connections. Instead of engaging in meaningful activities, 
we consume a constant stream of spectacles that leave us feeling alienated and unfulfilled. The third principle highlights the role of media and consumer culture in perpetuating the spectacle. Mass media, advertising, and the entertainment industry all play a crucial part in maintaining and reinforcing the spectacle. They create a world of illusions that encourages passive consumption and manipulates our desires, often leading us to prioritize superficial appearances over deeper values and relationships. With this knowledge, we can also explore real-life examples and situations where De Boer's ideas come to life and consider how we might apply his insights to challenge the spectacle and foster a more authentic, connected existence. Social media has become an integral part of our lives, often dictating how we present ourselves to the world. One of the most striking examples of the society of the spectacle in action is the curated online persona many of us create on platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. The curated online persona and its detachment from reality. Consider the countless images and posts we see every day, showcasing seemingly perfect lives filled with exotic vacations, luxurious possessions, and flawless appearances. These digital facades often bear little resemblance to the complex, nuanced realities of our offline lives. In our quest to gain followers and likes, we end up presenting a distorted version of ourselves that prioritizes the spectacle over authenticity. For instance, think about a time when you attended a social event or visited a beautiful location, and instead of fully enjoying the experience, you found yourself preoccupied with capturing the perfect photo to share on social media. To address this situation, consider being more mindful of the moments you experience, allowing yourself to be fully present rather than focusing on the image you present to others. The Commodification of Personal Experiences our social media activity often turns our personal experiences into commodities. We share our lives not for the sake of genuine connection, but to gain approval and validation from others. This commodification can be seen in the phenomenon of influencers who build careers on creating and sharing content that promotes a certain lifestyle or product, blurring the lines between genuine experiences and commercial promotion. Take the example of a recent vacation you may have taken. Did you find yourself visiting popular tourist spots and capturing images just because they were Instagrammable? To break away from the commodification of experiences, try to focus on the intrinsic value of your experiences and make choices based on your genuine interests and desires, rather than external validation. By recognizing these manifestations of the spectacle in our social media habits and taking deliberate steps to prioritize authenticity, we can begin to challenge the grip of the society of the spectacle on our lives, fostering deeper connections and more meaningful experiences. Let's examine another aspect of our lives that illustrates the society of the spectacle, advertising and the creation of false desires. Advertising is a powerful force in shaping our desires and aspirations. It is an industry built on the manipulation of our emotions, often exploiting our insecurities and creating artificial needs to drive us towards consumption. Influencer culture and the promotion of consumerism The rise of influencer culture on social media is a prime example of how advertising infiltrates our daily lives. Influencers, with their massive followings, are often used by brands to promote products, creating a subtle yet powerful form of advertising. We may find ourselves feeling the urge to purchase items or adopt certain lifestyle choices based on the content promoted by influencers we admire. Imagine following a fitness influencer who constantly promotes a specific brand of workout gear or supplements. You might be tempted to purchase these products, believing they will help you achieve the same level of success as the influencer. To address this situation, Critically evaluate the motives behind the promotion and ask yourself whether the product aligns with your personal values and needs, rather than basing your decisions on the allure of the spectacle. The impact of advertising on self-worth and self-image. Advertising often perpetuates unattainable standards of beauty, success, and happiness, which can negatively impact our self-worth and self-image. For example, consider the countless ads featuring airbrushed models and luxurious lifestyles which can lead us to feel inadequate in comparison. Recall a time when you saw an advertisement that made you feel insecure about your appearance or your life situation. To counteract the negative impact of such advertising, remind yourself that these images are carefully crafted illusions designed to sell products. 
Focus on cultivating self-acceptance and self-compassion, and seek out diverse representations of beauty and success that challenge the narrow standards perpetuated by advertising. By becoming aware of the ways in which advertising shapes our desires and influences our self-image, we can take steps to reclaim our agency and resist the spectacle. Now let's turn our attention to another area where Debord's ideas are strikingly relevant, political spectacles and the manipulation of public opinion. In today's fast-paced media landscape, political spectacles often dominate the headlines, shaping our perception of events and influencing our opinions. These spectacles serve to distract and manipulate, obscuring the complexities of political issues and hindering our ability to make informed decisions. The role of media in shaping political narratives, the 24-hour news cycle and the rise of social media have given political spectacles a powerful platform. Consider the sensational headlines and sound bites that often take precedence over in-depth analysis and nuanced discussion. These spectacles simplify complex issues and encourage polarization, making it difficult for us to engage in meaningful dialogue and seek common ground. For example, recall a recent election campaign where attack ads, controversies, and scandals overshadowed substantive policy discussions. To address this issue, strive to consume news from diverse, reputable sources and focus on understanding the underlying issues and policies, rather than getting caught up in the spectacle. The erosion of critical thinking and informed decision-making, as the spectacle dominates our political landscape, critical thinking and informed decision-making are increasingly at risk. We may find ourselves swayed by emotional appeals, sensational headlines, or the persuasive charisma of political figures, rather than basing our opinions on facts and reason. Consider a time when you were influenced by a viral news story or a charismatic politician without fully understanding the context or implications of the issue at hand. To counter this, make an effort to cultivate critical thinking skills, question your own biases, and engage in open, respectful dialogue with others who hold different perspectives. By recognizing the presence of political spectacles in our lives and taking steps to develop critical thinking and informed decision-making, we can resist the manipulative power of the spectacle and work towards a more engaged, discerning, and democratic society. As cities around the world continue to grow and evolve, the influence of the spectacle is evident in the way urban spaces are designed and utilized. Increasingly, commercial interests are prioritized over communal spaces, leading to a homogenization of cities that stifles authentic, organic experiences. The prioritization of commercial interests over communal spaces, urban planning decisions are often driven by profit motives, resulting in the proliferation of shopping malls, commercial centers, and luxury developments at the expense of accessible public spaces that foster community and human connection. Consider the transformation of a neighborhood in your own city where local businesses and public spaces were replaced by chain stores and high-end developments. To address this situation, support grassroots movements and local initiatives that advocate for the preservation and creation of communal spaces, and participate in community events that foster genuine connections among residents. The loss of authentic, organic urban experiences, the homogenization of cities contributes to the erosion of unique, vibrant urban experiences. As cities become increasingly similar, we lose the opportunity to engage with the distinctive history, culture, and character of each place. Think about a recent trip to a major city, where you may have encountered a seemingly endless array of familiar chain stores, hotels, and restaurants, with little variation from one city to the next. To counter this trend, make a conscious effort to explore local, independent businesses and cultural institutions when visiting a new city and immerse yourself in the authentic experiences that make each place unique. Another facet of the society of the spectacle is entertainment. The entertainment industry, which encompasses film, television, music, and more, has become increasingly dominated by commercial interests, often prioritizing profit over artistic integrity. This commodification of culture results in a proliferation of formulaic content and the erosion of unique, diverse, and challenging artistic expression. The dominance of franchises and formulaic content. In recent years, we've seen a surge in the production of blockbuster franchises, sequels, and reboots, 
as well as formulaic content designed to appeal to the widest possible audience. While these projects may be financially successful, they often lack originality and depth, contributing to the homogenization of our cultural landscape. For instance, consider the abundance of superhero movies and the endless sequels in theaters today. To address this situation and seek out more diverse and thought-provoking content, make an effort to explore independent films, alternative music, and innovative theater productions that challenge the status quo and offer fresh perspectives. The loss of unique, diverse, and challenging artistic expression, as the entertainment industry becomes increasingly commercialized, opportunities for unique, diverse, and challenging artistic expression may become more limited. This can result in a cultural landscape that is less rich, less varied, and ultimately less fulfilling. Think about the last time you encountered a thought-provoking piece of art, whether it was a film, a play, or a music album, that challenged your assumptions or offered a new perspective on the world. To support and promote diverse artistic expression, attend local arts events, support independent creators, and share your discoveries with others to foster a more vibrant, diverse, and engaging cultural landscape. In conclusion, Guy Debord's concept of the society of the spectacle remains strikingly relevant today, as we witness its manifestations in various aspects of our lives, including social media, advertising, politics, urban planning, and the entertainment industry. The spectacle serves to separate us from authentic experiences, perpetuating a cycle of consumption and detachment that impacts our relationships, our self-worth, and our ability to engage critically with the world around us. But there is hope. By recognizing and understanding the influence of the spectacle, we can actively choose to prioritize authenticity, cultivate critical thinking, and support diverse, meaningful experiences that enrich our lives and communities. Let us take these insights and apply them to our own lives, challenging the society of the spectacle and seeking a more genuine, connected, and fulfilling existence. Thank you for joining me on this journey of exploration and reflection. Together, we can reclaim our agency and create a world that values genuine human connection over the alluring but ultimately empty promise of the spectacle.